Oh, look at that glory there. That is a beautiful coffee. Well, the coffee's flowing and it's time to get going. Over coffee. My name is Kevin Smith. It's good to see you again. Want a cup of coffee? Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on Questions Over Coffee. If you have a comment or a question, leave it in the section below. We'll get to it just as fast as we can. Today's question is, is there a connection between losing their first love talking about the Ephesian church in Revelation 2, and refusing to love their brother. So as we get started, let's go ahead and read the passage in Revelation chapter 2. Uh, we're going to read a portion of it. It's verses 2 through 5. Let's read that together. I know your deeds and your toil and perseverance, and that you cannot tolerate evil men. And you put to the test those who call themselves apostles, and they are not. And you found them to be false. And you have perseverance and have endured for my name's sake, and have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Therefore, remember from where you have fallen, and repent, and do the deeds you did at first, or else I am coming to you and will remove your lampstand out of its place unless you repent. So the first thing we want to notice is that Jesus does use agape when referring to love when he says you have lost your first love, you have lost your first agape. Uh, now in this case, um, of course, uh, our first love, our first priority should be God himself, you know, uh, including Jesus. So, yes, that is uh, one thing that has seemed to happen with the Ephesian church in Revelation 2. They have lost their love for Jesus, apparently. But does that have a connection to, well, losing their love for the brethren? Uh, because Jesus does praise them here for their deeds. I mean, look at verse 2. I know your deeds, your toil, perseverance, cannot tolerate evil men. You put to the test those who call themselves apostles, and they are not. You found them to be false. And then also in verse 3, you have perseverance, endured for my name's sake, not grown weary. So apparently they are doing the right stuff, uh, and apparently if you would have asked them, they would have said, well, of course I love Jesus. So what's going on here? What's the problem? Well, nothing in what I have read in extra biblical material, uh, early church fathers, anything like that, and it's possible, I just haven't found the right source, has given any um, information, okay? as to what Jesus is actually referring to here. John does not extrapolate any further than what Jesus says here. So let's take a look and see um, at least one possibility. Flip over to 1 John chapter 4, and we're going to consider uh, two different sections in this particular chapter. The first section we're going to consider is 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. Let's go ahead and read that together. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this, the love of God was manifested in us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. 
No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. Okay, so the first thing John says is that, well, we should love one another because, well, that loving one another is connected to knowing God. Now, that particular word here for know is gnosko. Uh, the particular definition here is to arrive at a knowledge of someone or something, to know, know about, make an acquaintance of. Now, this is um, more than just a head knowledge, in a sense. Uh, the make an acquaintance of is, well, basically to um, kind of have a relationship with, to recognize, uh, to meet, if you want to use that word. So, in a sense, when we... As brethren in Christ love one another, we acknowledge that we know, have a relationship with, have met God. We understand who he is. We understand what he has done for us and at least some of the implications of that love for us and some of the responsibilities we have as far as uh, putting him first and also loving each other. Now, the word that John uses for love here is agape, okay? A sacrificial love. Very, very rarely does John use the other uh, terms for love. There are rare occasions where um, he will use the other words. Uh, there are, are four words in Greek, basically, one of which is not found in the New Testament, uh, and the others um, John just does not tend to use. He uses agape a lot. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and read the second portion of this chapter that we're going to look at. Uh, again, that's 1 John chapter 4, and this time we're going to consider verses 18 through 21. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should also love his brother. Okay, so John makes a connection between loving God and loving our brother, and again, here he uses agape, so it's not the warm, fuzzy feeling. It's not a brotherly feeling. It is a sacrificial decision, a sacrificial love that we have made for our brethren. Okay, um, He says we can't love God and hate our brother. Now, this particular word is... Uh, Misos, which is li literally hate. Now, that's the noun form. It is related to a verb, miseo, which is a strong aversion to hate, detest, be disinclined to, disfavor, or disregard. So, in a sense, what he is saying is we can't just ignore someone that is a brother or, or sister in Christ and say, yeah, I love God, but I'm going to ignore this person over here. You know, yeah, I know they need something, but yeah, yeah somebody else can take care of them. I don't like those folks. You know, um, I despise those folks. No, it doesn't work that 
way. So is there a, a connection between loving our brother and loving God? Yes. Is there a connection between losing our first love and not loving our brother? It appears that there may actually be a very strong connection there. Here is what F.F. Uh, F. Bruce, a uh, scholar and uh, pastor in England, uh, said. This is from his commentary on the Gospel of John and the Epistles. Uh, this is a really good source if you have not uh, used it before. But here is what he says about this. Where God's love or our love for God is mentioned, John makes no distinction between the Father and the Son. Alike in loving men and being loved by them, in return, the Son and the Father are one. Peter speaks of Christ as the one whom not having seen, his people love. John agrees, but adds that love for the unseen one will be attested by the love for his people whom we do see. Much verbal expression of devotion for the person of Christ can coexist with remarkably unchristian attitudes towards the people of Christ. John's comment on this inconsistency is sharp and undisguised. In this, he is at one with his master who declared that in the judgment, behavior towards his brethren will be counted as behavior towards himself. Those whose lives are marked by lack of love in this regard may well have a sense of trepidation as they look forward to the day of review. We don't know exactly, like we said in the beginning, we don't know exactly what was going on in the Ephesian church, but it appears not to be um, a lack of love or at least a lack of admitted love of for the Savior, okay? Because like we read in verses 2 and 3, they're doing the right things, and they seem to be uh, doing them in a way that, well, is not a begrudged kind of way. So let us seek, as John says, to love one another, to sacrificially love one another. Because as we do so, we know God. So I have a question for you. What are some practical things that we can do to show sacrificial love for our brethren? Leave me a comment in the section below. Click the like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on Questions Over Coffee. Thank you for our time together today. I look forward to the next time. Keep pressing forward.